Good evening, um, John, Tri Coach John. Going to do the nutrition uh, Saturday evening for the Bolton Marathon. So I uh, thought I'd give it a go live after our fun and games in the week and uh, see how we get on. So um, it's th this evening is, is all about uh, race day nutrition and um, exploring the minefield. So hopefully from some of the um, messages and um, explanations that I've been given uh, or giving as, as we've gone along, um, you are going to rehearse um, what you do on race day. So hopefully, um, evening gents, if you've got any questions then ping them in the box there and I'll try and cover some. Um, but if you've got, um, between now and race day, um, you want to make sure that you have got a plan as to what you're going to do on race day. So the official organisation intention is to provide bananas every one and a half to two miles, um, which is a lot of bananas. Um, and then it is um, to provide isotonic uh, water from a cardboard box, a little bit like a wine box kind of arrangement where it'll be a cardboard box with a silver foil inner and they'll decant that into paper cups. So race day wise, you need to make sure that you've got a plan. At this moment in time, it's not possible for you to purchase the isotonic water and train on the water. That would be best practice, uh, my recommendation if you could do it. Um, but unfortunately, at this moment in time, it's not. I also don't know many people that will do running training for a marathon, uh, eating bananas every one and a half to two miles either. So um, COVID is also a consideration. So um, some races have gone on this year um, and COVID has had an influence on uh, feed stations, nutrition, how people have done all of those um, and what the alternative and options are. So what I would anticipate on race day would be that you would have um, tables with cups on filled with, with the water from the boxes and then you can drink them and then just dispose of the, of the paper cups, hopefully in a wheelie bin beside. Some people get a little bit precious and start thinking that they're Mo Farah and winning the race and just have a swig, chuck it over their head and then throw the cup on the floor and expect somebody else to pick it up after them. Um, unfortunately, um, we live in that sort of environment. Um, so race day nutrition should have been rehearsed um, in lead up to that, that 99.9% .9 of everything that you can do um, is rehearsed, anticipated, practiced, you know how you feel, um, you know when you're going to take gels, if you're going to take gels, you know if you're going to have jelly babies, if you're going to have fluids, what fluids you're going to have, what works for you, what running pace works for you. Um, I've always found it surprising so I've done London Marathon four times in the Pink Lady Apple costume and we always had to start um, at the back um, and let everybody else go and then work our way through the crowds as you go along so because the Pink Ladies are a sponsor of the marathon they get a number of free places for advertising as a exchange um, between the two business entities um, but what that gave me was the opportunity to observe people in the last pen um, of like the 40,000 people that were running, um, give me the, the, the chance to observe how then people prepare to run a marathon. Well, that first mile is littered with gels that people have bought at the expo. Um, they bought a belt. Somebody says to them, this is what you want on race day, you know, buy this seven pound belt and we can shove gels in it. You can get seven gels from them. We'll sell you those. We do a deal. We do a, a, a expo special package um, and you get 10 gels for the price of six or something. And then they shove these gels into these elasticated loops on this belt, put it on and then start running. They've never done it in training before. 
They've none, never done it on any of their long runs, up to 21 miles, up to 23, whichever training plan you're following, whichever package your coach is telling you to do, whatever you choose to rehearse. Um, and at the end of the first mile, leading into mile two of the London Marathon, the whole floor is a wash of gels that have fallen out of people's belts um, that they've dropped because they never rehearsed what they were going to do on race day and then execute that plan. I am ex-military. I do like to be prepared. I do go a little bit in detail into what I'm going to do. Um, but prior planning and preparation prevents perf poor performance. We, we Military chuck another word in there, but yeah. Um, so it's just making sure that that what you do on race day is no surprise, it's no change. You know, one lady, God bless her, she was she was a little bit round, shall we say, a little bit overweight. At the end of mile one, she was all red faced and going, Phew, I didn't think it would be this hard. She hadn't even done a 5K in preparation. So um, I'm just reading, I do apologize without having my glasses in. Uh, Mark has put in a comment there, we didn't even think about it. It's not a picnic. It, 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 it's not. You, you, so, I don't understand how people can get a place in the London Marathon and not train for it. That beggars belief for me, but people do it. Go along and watch a marathon and you'll you'll see a whole variety, especially London, of, of people that, that turn up and, and do it. So, um, it, I, I don't know how they can do it, but that's everyone's different, and I'm, who am I to criticise? So, um, what I what, what I do recommend is that, and you, I don't want you to become like a military machine. That's not my that's, that's not my message. That's not my underlying current for the videos. But if each Saturday evening you eat what you're going to eat before uh, the Bolton Marathon on a Sunday for each of the weeks that you do your long run then you know what works, you know how you feel in the morning. So go into the hotel, Pink Lady Apples would put me up in a hotel at the start line at a cost of £300 for a double room breakfast. Um, I'd take two um, bagels with me, I'd even slice the bagels and put them into a sandwich bag. I would, in the weeks leading up to the marathon date, use um, a squeezy tub of honey each Sunday morning I would toast my bagels, put butter on, and then I'd squeeze the honey on the top. Um, so I got to the point where I had about that much left in the bottom of Rouse honey pot, um, and I would take that to the hotel with me. So I've got my cut bagels in a sandwich bag with my honey uh, squeezy pot. I'd go down to breakfast in the morning, I'd put them in the toaster, and people are saying, excuse me, where, where'd you get the bagels? So I brought them with me. They're like, wow, okay. You know, and I've even sliced them because I know in a in a hotel breakfast there's there's some some of them have pre cut bread and some of them have a knife a, a bread knife where you can cut the bread. Um, so you you have to know where where you're going and what you're doing. So um, I would toast them. I would butter them with the butter off the table. Squeeze on the honey. Eat them. Drink my coffee. Um, and I'd even take my own Actimel with me to make sure that my body movements, uh, bowel movements, etc., were were on were on time and worked. And and then um, I'd be ready to go. I, I personally have a gel 45 minutes before the start, um, and then uh, off you go and you've got your plan. So my simple plan at my pace for running a marathon is a gel at 7, 14, 21, and 24 miles. The 14 and the 24 will be a caffeine gel of between 50 and 75 grams of caffeine. But I've got a high tolerance of caffeine and I, I enjoy lots of coffee. So you would need to train or test yourself. If you're a person that only drinks tea, doesn't drink coffee, has very little caffeine, you would need to make sure on your training runs, on a long Sunday run, that you have a gel potentially at 14 mile point and you're very close to home within one to two miles. If you end up with GI distress and you need to go to the loo and have a sit down, um, then it, it's it, you're close enough to home to do that. So Scott's asked, uh, what gels do I use? Um, I, I use several different ones. Power Bar, 
I am becoming a power bar ambassador, so I am going to push those. I like those, and the C2 Max is there. Secret Training uh, is another company that provides gels. Um, the guys are former professional cyclists, um, and without getting too scientific, um, there are some caffeine and betaine uh, gels that are performance enhancing that, that go a long way. But without getting distracted with the gels, um, gel is a personal choice so again i'll drop in um the link after the video of um confuels um and that you can buy individual you can buy secret training you can buy power bar you can buy sis you can buy goo um you can buy talk again it comes down to flavors it comes down to texture high five i tear it and my hands are all sticky and then i end up doing that for the rest of the marathon and it drives me mental because I can't lick them to get them clean I can't wipe them on anything it's just crazy and it just and I just somebody commented on a, on a marathon post the other day I said do what you're comfortable with because come mile 22 it will be absolutely mental torture what it does to you so um Scott tried SIS when I was training a few years back for a couple of weeks didn't agree with me absolutely um Talk are fantastic. I love Bonoffi. So uh, Talk do a Bonoffi gel and it is the most sensational flavour on the market to me. Um, but I like um, Power Bar ones, the C2 Max. I can feel the energy going into my body and going to the right places. They've got a combination there that works. The flavours are all varied. You can get ones with sodium. So if you sweat a lot, you need to top up with sodium. If you get cramps, magnesium and sodium is a good combination. They sell those. They sell caffeine ones. And the beauty of going to um, KOM fuels is that you can order individual sachets of each brand or each different brands, different flavours and try them. So um power bar ideally you'd end up buying a box so you'd end up with a box of 12 or 24 you might have one and go oh, actually i don't like that you know and then you're left with a load and you're trying to sell them on facebook and someone wants to offer you three quid for something you pay 29.99 for but if you went to Confuse, james there you buy six eight ten sash um gel uh pouches he puts them in a box it comes through your letter box it's with you in two days and it's fantastic so yeah, Scott, if, if high five works for you, buddy, then absolutely go for it. You know, good evening, Janet. Long time no see. Um, so it, it's it's finding um, what what works for you. I've never used Tailwind. I've tasted it, um, and I've I've raced with people that have used it, and it really is personal choice. And Tailwind again is available from Confuels. I'm I'm not I'm not an advocate of 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 pushing people to one site. But James at Confuels, his whole business plan is that you can order that single sachet from me. You haven't got to order a, t a box of 24 um, and then you're stuck with 23 that you don't like. Or you've suffered it long enough and you've had th four of them and you've got a whole box of 20 left and they go off under your kitchen sink. So um, find one that works for you. Marcus, I have a, an idea of eating the same thing the day before a long run advice, especially if it leaves. Yeah, you know. So if 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 like Rich, race, um, Richard, the race um, director, you like a pizza, then fair enough. You know, if that works for you and a and a and a, and a dessert, fantastic. You know, I, to, to me it's too much fat, and it, it, it leaves me stodgy. I feel crazy. I have a sluggish bowel movement the following day, um, and I don't mean to be gory when I talk about bowel movements and stools and other things. Um, but there's a reason why we do this, and you can Google. There's a bloke who ran, I think, the um, the Cardiff Half Marathon. He's just covered in poo. You know, he's from his shorts down to his knees. He's had GI distress, um, and, and and it doesn't look pretty. You know, and that's what we want to avoid um, by having things differently on the day. So, if if you're going to train. Um, and only fuel from what's provided on the course. At this moment in time, it's bananas every one and a half to two miles, cut in half, um, and you'll get about 30 grams of carbs in those, and then the isotonic drink. Not a problem. You know, take that, top up, carry on. Um, so um, you, you need to, to make sure you've got a plan. I, I would, in, in, in COVID times, I personally would make sure 
that uh, you know what meal you're having the night before, you know what you're having for breakfast, and in your long runs each Sunday when you've gone out and done it, um, that you take your gels at the times and the paces that you that you want to do. It can be every hour on the hour. Um, your breakfast should last you for the first hour, so you shouldn't need to go out and take one at 40 minutes. Excuse me. Um, go out and then rehearse that plan. So wait an hour. If you go out fasted and then you have a caffeine gel on the hour, your heart rate is going to be absolutely all over the show and then you'll struggle for the rest of your run to get control of your heart rate so um, if you're not going to run the marathon fasted I wouldn't be doing your long runs on a Sunday fasted um, so make sure that um, just just I can't I can't emphasize it enough Re rehearse 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 it, it's that simple um, I, I do triathlons and I do them around the world in different places and that brings different challenges. If you live in Bolton and you can walk to the start line within half an hour um, from your front door, then you know the night before meal is fine because it's in your kitchen. Your breakfast is in the morning is in your kitchen yet again and then you can walk down drinking a drink. Um, I've just done a three hour bike ride so I've just come off and got some vitamin C in, in my drink bottle um, drink your drink if you've got your favourite little drink bottle then you don't want to throw this away or give it to somebody else as you're walking down Covid times no one's going to want to touch it so in that regard put your drink put your water into a disposable drink bottle um, and then dispose of it sensibly that way um, so at least when you're walking from your front door down to the start line, you've got 500 mils of a, of a, of a drink solution there, isotonic, um, precision hydration, preload, any, any of those drinks there. Um, when would you incorporate using the gels? I'll come back to that, Scott. Um, so um, walk down and then you can dispose of that. Have your gel, dispose of that. Um, and then you're ready to go. If you choose to have half a banana, um, absolutely fine, not, not a problem, Wh whatever works for you, but just do it each day. If you live more than an hour's drive away, you want to consider what you're doing. If you've booked a hotel, if you're staying in the travel lodge, then my recommendation would be stay in a travel lodge on a Saturday night. If you can do the one that you're gonna stay at for the Bolton Marathon, I would check into that hotel. And this is just me, but it's a bit different. An Ironman race is £600. You then book a hotel and you go through a plan. So um, to not prepare for an Ironman race and have your, your nutrition sorted would be a little bit crazy. So my next race is Frankfurt next year. I would like to, in May, May Bank Holiday weekend, go out to Frankfurt, stay in the hotel I'm going to stay in, and then ride the bike course do a little bit of a run on the on the run course and swim in the lake where the race is, I will invest my time in reconnaissance. There's an old saying that time spent in reconnaissance is seldom time wasted. If you can afford to, if COVID allows you to, I would stay in the hotel in Bolton, the guest house, the Airbnb that you're going to stay in before race day, um, on a different weekend before the race, and then rehearse your evening meal the night before, you might have to take a casserole dish, you might have to take a wok, you might have to take a toaster, you might have to take a, a, a bread knife, um, and then in the morning you would then know what you're gonna do for your breakfast, um, and then I would then rehearse what it is then at start time to walk down to the start line at the start time on the Sunday morning to then see what else there is. Um, Race day will be slightly different if there are road closures and, and barriers and, and other things. Um, but the Saturday before race day should give you a general indication of that. So um, it's just making sure you have a little look. Um, right, so go back to Scott's message. When, what, when marathon training, when would you incorporate using the gels? It's all personal, but a rough guide, like I've said before, is 7 miles, 14, 21 um, and 24 it gives you an easy reminder if you want to do it by hour and you're, you're a four hour or a five hour marathon runner and you want to take five gels and you take one every hour fair enough do that you know caffeine is 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 not on the banned substance list um, it's very close and they keep disputing it um, but caffeine 
um, alleviates the sensation of fatigue um, and helps you push on a little, little bit more. Um, but don't take more than 50 or 75 milligrams at a time. If you do, you, you might have a problem at, at the back doors. So ju just be very careful. Marcus, I'm fascinated by the topic. Earlier this year, three of us were doing our long runs. Um, three, three, fifteen. Oop. Without eating anything. We had a couple of coffees for breakfast and off we went. All of the GI issues that I'd had before vanished. So that's, that's, that's awesome, Marcus. The fact that you're doing um, three hour to three fifteen, um, 20 to 23 miles, that tells me you're between, is it six and seven minute miles? So you're uh, an ectomorph that needs to carb load. Um, and if you hydrate properly, like you've alluded to, you've taken coffee and you've had your breakfast and off you've gone. Um, and if you look at Capocci and, and Paula Radcliffe and all the marathon record holders, they're all of that different body type. Um, you are a high burner in carbohydrates. Um, you can fuel from fat easily um, and you normally carb load um, and hydration. You would just need to top yourself off and, and not be a problem. Um, an ectomorph. So there, there are three different body types and I, I don't want to go into that now. But if you Google um, precision nutrition um, body types, it will come up and it will show you. So um, I'm a, 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 an endomorph um, when I'm a little bit cuddlier and then a mesomorph when I'm fitter and more cut up. Um, and those two can change body types. Um, and then there's ectomorph, which is uh, Mo Farah, and he will never, ever change his body type. Um, he is that small little person. If you see him in the Legion or see him in a bar, he's propping up the bar. He can eat what he wants, drink what he wants, and he might get a little pot belly, and that's about it. Um, and that's why nutrition is so interesting for different people, because you, it's an individual plan. You need to find what works for you. And this is why I encourage people to rehearse. So people can can say, I'll, I'll go out with a 750 ml drink bottle and I'll just drink Tailwind and I'll smash a marathon in three hours, 45. Well, fantastic. Their body's fueling from fat. They're topping themselves off with a little bit of carbs um, through their drink bottle. Um, and, and that's them and it works for them. There's uh, There was a photo on Facebook today. It was amazing. The guy's got the 50 mile record and he was he was running at five forty five minute miles for 50 miles. Um, and it stood for 30 years and someone's beat it and he's now second. Um, but if, if you're... If your fitness level and your base endurance is, is at such a level, you will fuel yourself from fat um, and just top your glycogen off now and again. Excuse me. So if your body, um, if your heart rate is, is ticking along at under 140, you're primarily burning f uh, fuel from fat. So we've got a two hour store of, of um, carbohydrates um, and glycogen and um, an infinite level um, at fat level. So one of the common quotes off of the Tour de France is, you could ride the Tour de France route um, at fat burning pace and not have to eat, just drink water, and you'd be able to ride it. You wouldn't be able to be competitive, because to be competitive, you need to then go up into your anaerobic levels and, and above, which then burns glycogen, which is why they take gels. So. It's it, it's interesting when you look at it. So if some of some of us will run a marathon and we might be slightly overweight and we might run at 160 heartbeats, well already you're tucking into your glycogen stores. So you will need the bananas, you will need the gels, you will need carbohydrate drinks, you'll need isotonic, you know, you will need these additional food supplements. So this far out from the marathon, I would encourage you to start your Sunday long runs running at 140 heartbeats or less. Um, and then you will run fuel from fat, um, run longer, um, and between now and then your pace will get quicker. So it, it, it's not a quick fix. It won't happen overnight. Um, I can't say I've had COVID. In February this year, I didn't train a single day. I felt absolutely crap. Um, my girlfriend made me do a breathing test, hold my breath for 20 seconds, 
B and X army. I wasn't going to fail the test. And at 20 seconds, I stepped out of the room um, and nearly passed out in the hallway. I wouldn't let her see that. Um, but but I some, something was going on in my lungs. So then I started training again in March and I'm back down to, I was doing 30 minute miles at 165 heartbeats. It was crazy. And, and now I'm running nine minute miles at, at 140. Um, you have to invest in that process and, and it will work. And I'm now back down to fueling from fat as opposed to fueling from glycogen. So all of these individual elements will influence your performance on race day. If you go out on race day and you run at 140 heartbeats um, and you fuel it with your gels, 7, 14 and 21 is what you've done in training, you're carrying an extra 50 gram ca um, caffeinated gel for mile 24 just to give you that last final push when it starts to feel a little bit sensitive and your body says, yep, yeah, you've run a marathon today. Um, execute that on race day but what what is common is that we go wow I feel amazing we're running a marathon and, and that person in front of me is running faster so I'm going to run with them and all of a sudden we're up to 150 heartbeats or 160 or we're excited and we're running 170 and this person wow I can keep up with them you know and you get to the halfway point you're like wow I feel I feel terrible and Richard alluded to it a, a week or so ago in his video that that runners then hit the wall well if you've ever watched the two hour marathon attempt, even those guys, when it comes to the two hour point or the, or the 20 mile point of it, they then struggle from that point forward. And that's where you've burnt out all of your glycogen. So you've got no carbohydrate stores left and you have to go to fat, which means you have to slow down. So it's making sure that, again, reinforcing the rehearse, 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 that you do your long Sunday runs at a pace that you'll get used to. If you want to do them at 160, do it at 160. But I'd be interested to see you do 24 miles at 160 heartbeats a minute and fuel from, from gels. You, you, you just can't get it in quick enough to process it through the body. Um, there, there, there will always be the exception to the rule, but they will then normally be of a body type that I've alluded to earlier. Um, so it's just making sure um, that depending on your body type you feel accordingly to, to what you need to do and it comes in the practice we're so far out from race day um, that we just need to make sure that we've got the time to identify what we like on a on a Saturday evening have that meal um, so try 150 beats per minute on training so, uh, Scott I would try 150 you might find it slower if you tried 140 you might find you're walking um, and, and I, I don't want to get into a, a coaching program um, on, on a, nutrition, a nutrition chat. But yes, tomorrow I've got a two hour run. I'll end up running a half marathon in two hours um, and it'll all be at 140 heartbeats. Um, yeah, those fasted long runs were 130 heartbeats max. Fantastic, Marcus. Absolutely amazing. Um, I wish I wish I was that fast. So yeah, that's a, that's amazing. So it, it's I've never done it before. That's all exactly, Scott. So um, it, it, this this is the time to to to, to try different things. So um, have your meal this evening, um, and then have your breakfast in the morning, like you're going to do on race day. And if you if you've been running at one sixty, try one fifty tomorrow. If you've been running at 150, try 140 and, and, and have a look at the speed. Too many people focus on speeds. Um, race day, only the few have those unless they flagged up. Enjoy the moment, embrace the experience. Only the few have those. Have what, John? John Paul. Embrace the experience, absolutely. Without a shadow of a doubt. Um, but, but it's a lot nicer to be able to walk away at the end of the day as opposed to not be able to move. Um, there's there's a balance there there's there's definitely a balance so um you can get carried away with a moment um not not a problem at all but but what what i find is that i don't want it to be the last time that person ever runs a marathon um i'd like them to run a marathon again and if if i can encourage somebody um 
Yeah, great, Scott. Go for it for the 13, buddy. Um, so I, I would encourage people to um, rehearse, plan and prepare, execute a plan, enjoy the experience um, and, and, and want to do another one. So after I did my first London marathon in the Pink Lady Apple costume, I was five hours. Um, that's a long time on your feet. Um, I didn't run for six weeks. I, every time I looked at my trainers, I was like, that, get stuffed. I'm not going anywhere near you. Um, I wasn't interested. It was a painful experience. In the end, I got down to 357 uh, in the Pink Lady Apple costume. Um, I fine-tuned what I was doing um, and, and I had a great experience. Um, each each of them brought different challenges. So I'm running in a Pink Lady Apple costume, running a sub four marathon, um, and proper fit athletic club runners at mile 18 and mile 20 are stopping and getting massages from St. John's Ambulance. You know, that that's the difference. You've got you've got people with not an ounce of fat on them stood there get getting their legs massaged by um emergency helpers. Um, so that they can finish the run because they've gone out too fast. It was hot, you know. You've got you've got to have these different plans. Um, so fantastic, John. It, it's 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 about everybody enjoying it, you know. You you can get carried away with it. So the first London marathon, I'm, I'm in the Pink Lady Apple costume, mile 22. The little devil on my right shoulder. I'm left-handed, so I think the left one is stronger. The little devil on my right shoulder said. Just after Blackfriars Bridge, turn right through the crowd. Nobody will notice you. Just walk off. You don't need to do this anymore. This hurts. You can stop any time. Just walk off. And the little devil on my left shoulder said, are you really going to listen to him? As if no one's going to notice you in a pink lady apple costume. You know, all sorts of things go through your mind. All, all the times my daughter's been there each, each time I've done a marathon and it's been amazing. Um, I do it to inspire her. She's got cystic fibrosis. She is, she is, she is uh, uh, amazing to me. Um, and I do all of this to make sure that somebody, that she sees somebody without CF lungs doesn't find it easy to do all of this stuff. Um, so, yeah. Um, you, the, the marathon is, is an amazing day. Um, no, no question that London Marathon, 10 deep at the finish... Um, the crowds are, are absolutely immense, but you're at your worst. <laughs> absolutely, when you don't want anybody to be there, they're 10 deep. At the start, when they're one deep and it's families and friends waving you off, you know, there's there's hardly anybody there and you feel your fittest and your, and your nicest. So it's um, it, it's it is a crazy, crazy situation. Did my first marathon at 51. Fantastic. It's going to for a jog I pulled three hours 48 and enjoy me to chat and it's a fantastic have a, have a great run um and 348 is amazing so yeah absolutely I'm just checking for any more messages not coming through but there we go um so yeah it, it's for for race day you have to have your plan um thanks John appreciate it so um just make sure that you take this time. There's, it's nice that, that Richard has put this package together, the unfortunate scenario of, of COVID giving us a lockdown, um, but the chance to have these videos six months out um, from the race gives you a chance to get everything sorted. It's lovely. Everybody, when you're out running of an evening after work and you give your thumbs up, smile to other runners, you know, all of them are doing pretty much a... A, um, a spring marathon because who else is going to be out that time of night in that sort of weather getting the miles in um, it's fantastic so thank you Marcus appreciate it so um, it, it's smile at each other give it give us all the thumbs up everyone's going through the same um, if, if you're out for a training run and it's less than an hour I would just make sure you fuel yourself two hours before um, for race day get your Saturday evening meal sorted Sunday morning breakfast, and then go out for your run as your miles increase. So Scott's gonna do um, 13 miles tomorrow. If I was you, Scott, I'd take one gel with you and have it on the hour um, and see how you get on. If you can last to an hour 15 and take it and it'll give you a push for the last 45 minutes, um, then fantastic. Um, the, the dilemma, so I used to train with all of the free 
nutrition that I used to get off of different triathlon races. So you go there and the feed stations and the run stations and all that lot will give you all these gels, all these bottles, and I'd grab all of them and I'd use them. And I didn't really like them. It didn't really work for me. Um, so I would use them during training because of affordability. And then it would come to race day and I'd then spend all of the money, anything up to £100 on my drink sachets. I, I sweat like crazy. If I dropped a picture in and showed you Iron Man Lanzarote, I look like I'm sponsored by Swarovski. The sweat, the, the, the sodium that's come out of my body and lines my, my clothing, it just glistens in the crystals of the salt. So I have to take precision hydration. Um, I have to take a, a sodium orientated drink. Um, otherwise I cramp and I just, I can't, I can't stand up. That's simple and it's trial and error. Um, and I and I went to do Lanzarote to test myself in that environment, um, just just to see how I performed, and, and I had a fantastic day, absolutely fantastic day. So I I know what works for me. Um, only done three marathons, done the hard way the first way. Yeah, as, as we all do, you know. It was half the time we think we can just do it and get on with it, and and there's not always this sort of support element to it. Um, so make sure you've got your gels, you've got your, your, your understanding. If you can afford to, then what you're going to use on race day, train with every weekend, you know. But not everybody has got that budget. It's, it's tricky times. We're running into Christmas, you know. There's Christmas presents, there's festivities, there's a COVID lockdown, there's possibly furlough. There's all of these contributing factors that it might not be physically possible. You know, so making stuff like the flapjack that Richard showed yesterday, um, going into Tesco's and buying a tray of flapjack for a quid. You know, there are cheap options out there that you can get on the high street um, and, and take out with you. Absolutely not a problem at all. Whether you buy the tray of flapjack and you cut it up yourself or you buy the little tub out the bakery and they're already cut in cubes and, and bundled into a, um, a, a plastic um, container type thing. And just find what works for you. Um, the flapjack is, is, is an awesome fuel source. There's no question about it. Um, so if you do need to do that um, through training, so, so be it, you know. But I would then try within four to six weeks of, a, of the race day to, to fine tune what you're going to do. And if you're happy doing it on flapjack, then, then not a problem. My question is, when it comes to race day, can you carry enough flapjack? Um, and then I would also take out a whole banana um, on your longest training run, 21, 23 miles, excuse me, fuel yourself on flapjack and then have a banana because that's what's available on race day. So you might be at the point of 21, 24, 25 miles where there's a feed station as are every one and a half to two miles. Um, you might be tempted to have a banana. Now, would a banana initiate a bowel movement of all of that flapjack? at mile 25 and the last thing you want is your finisher photo of you with a bowel movement and you're not in a portaloo and and that's my concern um it's it, it's a little bit crude to say it um but i want your finisher pictures to be ones that you're proud of um and you post up on social media and you share how much you've enjoyed it um sounds like you're learning oh, every day's a school day buddy every day's a school day so um the last thing you want to do is is rehearse everything that you do and then those last four to six miles um which are tough i'm not going to lie to you um i'm not going to dress it up and, and cover it in icing sugar um mile, mile 20 to, to 26.2 um whenever somebody says to me they're going to do a marathon i always drop a picture in i love it off of facebook and it says i dare you to, to tr train for a marathon it will change your life and you'll find so much about yourself between mile 20 um, and the finish line. You will absolutely discover a new you, um, I promise you. Okay, it, it's a challenging event and it's too easy to say, no, and that's it, I'm just going to walk the rest. You know, some people do. You might have hit the wall, you might have got carried away, you might have been too excited and, 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 you, and you do that. So, um, cool. Yeah, weather, weather, John. Yeah, absolutely. Weather can make a massive difference. Um, so whether it's hot, whether it's cold, 
Um, and, and that's one of the things why I would, I've been chatting with Richard, the race director, to then say, um, my recommendation would be that you try the water before, before race day, because you need to know how you respond to it. Um, so yeah, I, I don't want to go into hyponatremia right now, but fluid intake is a consideration. It's something else I'd like to cover in a different video. Um, you can, if, if you don't drink isotonic or um, drinks with additional benefits, i.e. if you drink just water, you can dilute the sodium in your body to a point where your heart then struggles to contract and it then causes heart attacks. So you need to be very careful. Um, but that's that's for something else. So um, in your training leading up to 23 miles um, on your long Sundays, you should have a plan that works. Um, being ex-military, I liked. A, I had a Camelback, so I used a Camelback. But for every kilo in weight, you're 15 minutes slower. So if you're overweight, if you lose a kilo, I promise you, you'll be 15 minutes quicker. Uh, and your VO2 max goes up by one point. So, um, when I the first three marathons I did in the Pink Lady Apple costume, I had a two litre Camelback on my back, which is two kilos I'm running with more, which is the reason why I, I in the third year I got 4.01 um, for the marathon. I wanted under four hours was was my was my dream. So, um, it happened to me at Manchester. Just made it to the loo. Now I stick to what I know. Yeah, absolutely. Nice one, Mark. Um, so if you're going to do the marathon with a camel back on, you need to then train with it with on, but understand um, that that weight will slow you down. So um, I think it was Alan last week. Was it Alan and Gaz did a video and he runs with a 750 mil tailwind drink bottle. I've got a high five 350 mil bottle. Um, very similar that you put your hand through it. I apologize for not having it now, actually. Um, and it dry, the sloshing noise drives me crazy, but that encourages me to drink the thing and then finish it and then um, top it up at a feed station. So my plan at a, um, I did the marathon leg of a full Ironman uh, in Nottingham. And my plan was to have one of these bottles with my sodium drink mixture in and drink it for the first half marathon, give it to somebody, get another full one and then finish the other half of the marathon um and i got to mile 12 and the bottle was still full and i i intended to in my mind give that person the bottle give them a full one and take a full one back and i'm like your whole race plan is to drink this bottle before and exchange an empty one so in that one mile i drank everything that was in that bottle so Again, it's making sure that everything, if we do it in training, it becomes second nature and we then stop thinking about it. We just end up doing it. So now I'll go out for a long run and I'll take a bottle with me and I won't start drinking until the one hour point and I'll just sip away um, and it does my head in, the noise of that water swishing around that bottle that I then just finally put it in. Snap, good to hear you served. Ah, you know, you're not gonna do any headstands on tables this evening then, Paul. Good lad. I was in the really large one. Oh, there's another tanky down there. We're all, we're all popping up. So, yeah. Um, so, cool. So, um, any other elements there? I'm all about recovery as well. Recovery is equally as important as your meal the night before and, and your breakfast meal. Um, I have a pair of flip-flops. Um, I've got a couple of pairs. Ufus are absolutely amazing they are a recovery flip-flop um it alleviates pressure in your in your lower limb joints um and is fantastic after a marathon i can't wait to get out of my trainers and socks um i have a, a little packet of wet wipes um a travel towel wrap the travel towel around me take the clothing off i put on recovery clothing um compression wear um and then slip into some flip-flops um you're welcome, Paddy. I, I hope it's some benefit to you. So yeah. Um, so uh, 
flip flops. It's just amazing, JP. I tell you seriously. Um, so everybody's different. So just find what works for you. The the Ufus. Um, I'm not a brand ambassador, but but we we have had a few pairs sent in the posters for free, and they're fifty pound a pair. I wear them all day, every day. They're absolutely amazing. Um, trainers, I'm an Asics gel gel cumulus kind of guy, and I've been for for thirty years. So um, yeah, Ufu's better than sliced bread, says Rich. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I'll just um, I I can't decide between these ones <laughs> or or the slip on. Um, but I think after a marathon, I definitely want to have something that I can just pinch with my toes that doesn't slip off because I think they, my my, f the dexterity in my feet might might not be brilliant in the uh, in the slip-ons. But yeah, absolutely. I have a full clothing change at the at the end of a marathon, w without without a question. Um, serene bread. Yeah, I I have a full banana malt loaf in in my bag at the end. Hockers. Yeah, hockers are great for training. Hockers are fantastic because it's all it's all tarmac road, so yeah, it's great. Um, but um, uh, uh, after the marathon, I'll have a, that liter of chocolate milk. Um, normally, after a run, I'd have half a liter, but let's, you've you've just run a marathon, and you need fluids, so I'd have the the liter of chocolate milk. I'd have a whole banana malt loaf. Um, so there's your carbs and your proteins back into you, and then I'd have a five hundred mil. A water bottle in there and I put a precision hydration 1500 in um, go for the thong ones mm, nice <laughs> so yeah um, absolutely for your knees um, so yeah um, and have have that recovery process if try it in training once you come in the door have your have your protein shake have have your your carbohydrates be it two medjool dates um, be it a recovery bar, be it a banana, whatever works for you, whether you have a pint of milk and a, and a banana. Um, I love the chocolate milk out of Tesco's. It's a pound for a litre of 500 mil um, and then two medjool dates. Um, and then I'll have a a, um, a hydration drink. I'm still sipping from a three hour bike ride this evening. I don't want to get too detailed into that's vitamin C. So after a two hour run, I would recommend um, for an immunity boost, um, 500 to 1,000 milligrams of, of vitamin C and some glutamine. And glutamine is glutamine, so d don't get carried away with the grenade brand at £30 a tub and you can get it downtown for 12 99 Glutamine is glutamine. It's like salt. You mean it's just it's, it's a white powder. Um, you're not far away from my fluid intake of food. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, so, yeah, it, it's just make, making sure... That, that that you recognize the benefits of what you're doing so you have your meal the night before you have a good night's sleep um i'm running tomorrow so i'll have a chamomile tea this evening with a tablespoon of honey that tops off my liver glycogen the night before i'll have my breakfast before i go out um told of a full fat coat asap everything got before you change yeah, Mark, that's fantastic. On the Tour de France, they call it the Red Ambulance. Without a shadow of a doubt. Get them sugars back inside you. Um, no no question at all. Find what works. It's a bit gassy for me. Um, and uh, without, without, without question, um, if anybody was suffering, that would be the first thing that I would say for them to get or to go to and to have. Um, and if you had one of those in your bag and didn't drink it, it wouldn't be a bad thing. But if you had it in your bag and you needed it, then it's there. But yeah, they call it the Red Ambulance on the Tour de France. And if you watch any Tour de France videos, you, you'll, you'll look at those. They give, they give full-fat coke out to, uh, to the riders in the middle of a, of, of a long um, 160, 200-kilometre bike, bike ride day. So yeah, no, no question there. You just got to find what works for you. For, for me, it's precision hydration. I, I love the stuff. I'll drop again my 15% my discount code for them. Um, most of my discount codes now are coming through as Tri Coach John, um, and uh, and uh, if you want to try a sachet of theirs, then then Confuels is the place to go if you want to get one sachet, you know, um, and the variations are, are, are there. So you've got five hundred, a thousand, uh, no sorry, two fifty, five hundred, a thousand, and fifteen hundred. Um, so yeah, 
don't use Pepsi at the Bolton Ironman where they took the top off to make it flat. Flat, flat. In, in an endurance race, JP, um, flat, flat Coke is amazing. So you want the sugars, but you don't want the gas in it. Um, so, yeah, it, it's in an endurance race, we call it rocket fuel. So um, for an Ironman, I would come off the bike, do the first half marathon on my drink that I've got out of tr transition, my precision hydration mix. I'll have another tablet in a plastic bag in my back pocket of my, of my tri suit and make that up for the second half of the race. Um, but I will then at each feed station take a small cup of, of, of um, flat Coke um, and have that and it's rocket fuel. The electrolytes in it are amazing. Um, so yeah, um, some, something else to consider. Um, so there's, there's, there's a whole world of options out there. Um, and <clears throat> I think, I hope we're covering on this this evening is the trial and error, rehearsal, prior planning and preparation, you will find what works for you. If you're Richard, the race director, and you have pizza, um, crumble, um, I didn't see the breakfast. Did I see the breakfasts? I can't remember now. Um, and then the flapjack. If that works for you, fantastic. If that's your thing, you know. If 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 you have, I have pasta um, and um, chicken with a tomato-based sauce and a garlic bread the night before for me, um, and then morning of the i have porridge oats um absolute love it to pieces have it two hours before have my actimel have my coffee have my bowel movement boom 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 have my drink as i walk to the start line have my caffeine gel it works for me and i'm often running gels 7 14 21 24. find what works for you find the absolute um sweet spot of nutrition for you if it's something completely different then so be it. There is no right and wrong. It's just what works for you. Garlic bread is the future. Garlic bread. So yeah, it's just, um, what I like to do is suggest things that, that you don't have to persecute the family for the next six months. Every Saturday night, we're going to have chicken, pasta and red sauce. But if you had that, or you have Rich's pizza, then try Rich's pizza. I roasted in the night before and porridge oats for bagel for breakfast and a banana. Fantastic. Um, for the London Marathon, I used to have um, a buffet breakfast before. So I'd have everything um, at about 11 o'clock, a brunch kind of breakfast. And then evening meal I would have in the restaurant um, because of Pink Lady Apples. And I would always have a banoffee pie dessert. I absolutely love, absolutely love banoffee pie. But toffee bananas so toffee gives you all your sugars and your and your glycogen your bananas giving you all your carbohydrates you know and there's a little bit of biscuit base in there some cream and some deliciousness and at the end of the day if you feel amazing and you're happy then that's 90 percent of being ready for the start line whether you sleep that night through nerves anxiety am i gonna this am i gonna that it's by the by but if you've if you've had a nice meal then often quite commonly then you're in a good place um, and you can deal with the anxieties that you get beetroot juice that's another con conversation scott i i for a race i would have beetroot juice without question first time i tried it i didn't know the after effects and <laughs> nearly gave myself a heart attack yeah if you have red wee afterwards it's it can be concerning so beetroot juice um as somebody's mentioned it uh, I have a sweet tooth also, JP. So uh, beetroot juice is a performance enhancer. So NXO gives you additional oxygen in the blood. Um, you can buy it from SIS. They do a nitrate gel, they do a loading gel, and they do a race day gel. So you would then for, oh dear, so for a Sunday race, I would say start Thursday breakfast. Thursday, before your breakfast, you would have a loading gel and... Their gels are 250 milligrams of nitrates um, and you have four during the day. So before breakfast, before lunch, afternoon snack and, or, or before dinner and before bed. Um, you do that Thursday, you do that Friday, you do that Saturday and then Sunday you do it again before breakfast, before the race. Excuse me. And then SIS do ones that you can then take in training and in racing, which are different to the ones that you then use for loading. Um, 
but if you're not used to using beetroot, A, they can be an acquired taste. Some brands, um, Enervit, um, it's almost like a, a challenge in the jungle. You're almost gagging as you, as you squeeze this gel into your mouth and trying to swallow your... You, you are dipping, so it's, it's, it's an acquired taste. The, the SIS ones do an apple flavour, and that's lovely. That's like having apple puree. It's amazing. Hopefully I don't get nervous or anxious. Awesome. Wow, a wallet breaker. Um, it can be, that's, that's for sure. Depends what you want to spend, how far you want to go. If you're in a competition in, in, in a running club and you want, to, you want to win or you want to be top 10, it's just it's up to you. I can give you options and alternatives all day long. Um, so, yeah, I, I, for my triathlon races, um, I, I do the full beetroot um, protocol. Um, if I want to do well at a part run and I want to get close to 20 minutes and I'll do everything again leading into it and I'll, I'll, I'll do all my meals and I'll do my breakfast and I'll do all the, all the, um, the beetroot protocol as well. So, yeah, it's just how far do you want to go? Um, it's, the choice is yours. And for Alan that was on last week with Gaz, he wants to get a 3.30 marathon, I promise you. Um, if you start using nitrates, um, you'd be pretty close. So yeah, um, so yeah, interesting stuff. Um, again, with with the nitrates, um, I wouldn't it w I wouldn't recommend it being the only time that you do it is race day week. I would definitely um, my recommendation would be to do a half marathon race um, about six weeks out and do a full rehearsal um, on what you're going to do. You can go a little bit faster at a half marathon, um, but uh, it'll, it'll definitely catch you out. Richard Hover, I've just tried the gels this week, and I do like them. I had three during a 30K long run, um, and Flapjack felt great. Awesome. Fantastic. Nice 18-miler there. Fantastic before Christmas. Well done, Richard. So, yeah, each time I see the touch, see more when you've said more, I can't. It doesn't pop up, so I apologise for that. I've got through to your thumbs up, and that's that. So yeah, um, it, it's it's fantastic to see people's comments coming through, things that they've tried, things that they haven't considered, things that they'd like to to do. Um, this is a, this is a, a lot nicer and easier. I was a little bit scared about doing a live, but um, I can babble on enough, um, and then uh, hopefully people will get what they want out of it. And, and you haven't got to take every piece of this jigsaw. You can take what works for you, give it a try, and then see from there. If you've got any questions, stick them in the comments below and we'll go for that. Um, last week in the video I recorded, if you put a photo up of your recovery meal, then Power Bar, um, Harris Active Sports, who are Power Bar's UK um, agent, will then stick a goodie box in the post to you. So um, I'm not sure if, if Richard pulled that last night. I don't think we had any pictures. Um, so if, if we say we've got two, two Power Bar goodie boxes this week, um, if you want to uh, send us a photo after your long run tomorrow of your recovery nutrition or your breakfast and explain why you're having your breakfast and things, um, then, then we can uh, make sure we get two, two Power Bar goodie boxes out to two different people um, chosen by Richard, the race director, next Friday on his video. Um, and go for that so yeah I've not even started running yet wow so yeah um, use a lot of your advice and start training in the new year fantastic you've got loads of time there's there's no question about it so yeah it all depends whereabouts you are in your journey so uh, um, awesome so I'm, I'm training for a race in June next year um, and uh, I've, I've been training since since March so yeah it's it's wherever you are in your journey and, and however you do it and I'll be honest with you, every Saturday night, it's not the same meal. Um, but it will be mindful of what I'm having to make sure I've got the carbohydrate and, and macro balance for my run tomorrow. And then my breakfast tomorrow will be what I would then have to then go out and, and do that on, on, on a race day. Normally it's porridge, um, milk. Um, I have ricotta cheese in mine for, for extra protein. Um, I have half water, half um, milk. Um, and a tablespoon of linseed oil, uh, which sounds a bit weird, but you need your fats. So uh, it's just something that I was I was told is good. Um, another great session. Awesome. Glad you like it, Rich. So yeah, hopefully I've waffled on long enough. Good God. Um, so yeah. What about when you have a couple of beers? Um, just keep that balance 
JP, you know? Chinese tonight, and jam and toast in the morning. See how you go, Scott. You know, I don't think Chinese is the best food. Um, see how you run tomorrow on your 13 miler and see if you feel sluggish and a little bit bleh. Um My suspicion is you will be. Um, toast and jam in the morning is fantastic. So you're getting your carbs, you're getting your fats with your butter and you're getting your, your sugars from your jam. Perfect combination, no question. Chinese, irrespective of what you have, it's gonna, I, I think you'll be a little bit bleh tomorrow and that's that's just my suspicion um i think you'll be able to compare it to a different time where you have something a little bit cleaner um that you'll then say actually um i can refer back to john's video um and when i had pasta chicken and a tomato based sauce um and a garlic bread and i've all made it from home and it's lovely al dente um in when you cook the pasta different glycemic index um is lower and uh, and better for you um be running after 12 fantastic um do i always have breakfast before a long run um i do personally but then i wait two hours richard um so even on race day for an iron man we start at six in the morning so i have breakfast at four i am um fastidious in my preparation that even on the saturday even in the campsite even in a hotel i will wake up have breakfast at four o'clock on the Saturday so that my body is not in shock on the Sunday morning and getting up and having breakfast two hours before. So I get up and have my breakfast at four, I go back to bed, I go back to sleep. But my body, um, my bowel movements, shall we say, um, as we're all adults and mature, my bowel movements are initiated by the food and then I'll go out and I'll, and I'll do a short run or something at six in the morning at race start time if I've got a normally got a 20 minute run um, and maybe a little bit of a bike ride the day before an Ironman so um, before I rack the bike so um, I always have food two hours before if you're going to go out fasted and it says that I don't eat anything after I felt sick before when I've eaten so fair enough um, just make sure that your pace um, is 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 sorted in comparison to your fueling plan so that would generally mean that you're fueling from fat which would be a slower heart rate around 140 beats i, I suspect um shouldn't really be above 150 or you then start taking gels at the hour point i really enjoyed this evening thank you very much for taking your time important times yeah you're welcome jp it's no trouble at all my pleasure um so i've done recorded videos for the last couple of weeks and i just thought after the midweek one we do a little bit of a live and um, it's surprising how long you can waffle on for, um, but it's lovely to have people's feedbacks where you question whether other people watch the videos and if they've got questions. And there's a few of you that have just um, not hesitated to, to say things and do stuff. And it's great to have that interaction and, and that feedback and hopefully other people watching. Um, you might be asking questions that they want to ask, but then they haven't got the confidence like some of you have to, to ask them. So yeah, any time. So I'll give it a wrap. It's um, 10 past eight. Um, sorry if you've missed Strictly, you might have it on record or paused it, um, and uh, enjoy your long runs tomorrow, um, hopefully you've had your, your fuel this evening, um, I'm going to make sure I finish off my drinks, I've still got about 300ml left of my uh, vitamin C drink, um, hydrate this evening, get up in the morning, have your breakfast, have a drink, and then get yourself out for your long runs and start building your miles up, um, and, and just trial and error your, your plans. If you're going out with flapjack, if you're going out with gels, um, if you're going out fasted, then just know how you feel. So uh, um, you're welcome. So yeah, if if you are fasted, um, going out that way again, just to recoup, just be very, very careful if you start taking uh, caffeine gels um, as, as, your, as your fuel source because it will absolutely mess around with your heart rate. It'll be all over the show and you won't be able to control it. So, uh, yeah, cool. You're welcome, Mark. My pleasure. Um, so, yeah, just, again, rehearse. But from experience, I used to, for marathon training, go out and do two hours fasted and then have a caffeine gel and I would be all over the show. So, yeah, hopefully uh, some of you can learn from experience. You're welcome, Teresa. My pleasure. Um, so enjoy, enjoy your training. Enjoy your Saturday evening. And uh, I'll uh, hopefully catch up with you next week. Thank you. Take care.